Hi, everybody. Welcome to 11 Questions. And this is Ed Whalen. Oh, sorry. It's Peter Mark. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest voice hey. of the Calgary Flames. Great to have you here. This is 11 Questions. The title comes from the best hockey player to ever played in the world, Colin Patterson, number 11. Number so it's 11? a tribute yes, to yeah. him. Yeah. That's what this. That's where we got the inspiration. Very fitting. Yeah. So the playoffs are coming off, uh, and you uh, have had so many years of experience. So we know what it's like for a player, but what was it like as a play-by-play -play guy? Because there's a lot of work involved, but it helps when you get to see guys for seven games. Yeah, it, it? it's a lot easier when you have the same team playing night after night as opposed to one night you see them, then you don't see a team again for another two months. So from a preparation standpoint, there's still lots of preparation, but it's, it's uh, limited. Uh, when you, uh, you do a lot for game number one, and then you just update it as it goes along. So that makes it a little bit easier and see the same players all the time. So uh, your memory work you do before game one, and then you don't have to do any more till the next series. That's great. I wish I had more playoff games in my resume. Uh, let's talk about the best game. Of course, the 89 one was outstanding. But other than that one, can you remember a game that you called that you just said, man, I can't get any better than this? Well, the game that really sticks out, other than the uh, night the Flames won the Stanley Cup in, right. in 1989, was uh, in, uh, in the 2004 playoff run when the Flames played against Detroit in the second round. And the Flames were very much underdogs in that series. In fact, they were underdogs in the first series too, but much so or more so against the Red Wings. And uh, they weren't supposed to even have a chance. But game number six was played in the Scotiabank Saddle Dome, and Martin Jelenas scored the goal in overtime to clinch the series. And uh, that is the only time that I've ever yelled three yeah babies after a goal was scored. <laughs> <laughs> you, do you remember and, every stat that's ever taken place? I mean, well, you, you got that still. Well, I got up. some, but I can't, you know, some of them I have to go look up. Okay. What was Cliff Fletcher like to work with? He was an outstanding gentleman to work with. The thing I always liked about Cliff is that, you know, he'd come around and you'd chat with him, and the first thing he would say to you is, everything okay? And he was sincere. Like, it just yeah. wasn't uh, something that he was throwing out there. If you had a problem, he would like to hear about it, and if he could fix it, he would. And Cliff was a very, very uh, conscious guy for the people that were around the team, that uh, the players, the management, the coaches, even the office staff, the scouts, everybody, including us in the media. Yeah. He was very, very conscious of making sure that everything was going okay with us. It wasn't. If he could change it, he would. Was there a player ever in the history of the Flames, or even in the NHL, that you dreaded to meet? That you just, oh my God, here he is. Other than the guys you do this show with. <laughs> well, those guys, I have to, I have to get myself psyched up every time I come to do a show with Colin Patterson and Perry Barrison. But no, really, when when I think back, uh, I can't really think of one that kind of stands out that I didn't really want to interview or didn't want to be around. And everybody. Uh, with the Flames, it was always cooperative. Right. The odd time you'd have some issues uh, with other teams for varying reasons. But yeah. the one that one that kind of stands out was in in 1986 when the, when the Flames and the Oilers played in the in the uh, playoff series right. in the second round, and the Flames upset the Oilers. We had a big issue with Gretzky. Yeah. Uh, what had happened was uh, after the Flames had won uh, Game Four in the Calgary, you go to Edmonton for game number five. Yep. So the morning of the game, that's when we broadcasters would get our interviews. Right. That we would run, record them and run them on the broadcast that night. So uh, our pregame show always had an interview with the player from the other team. So as the Oilers were coming off the ice, I asked five of their guys for interviews. And all of them said no. And they just, or, or they didn't say, if they didn't say no, they just walked away and say anything. Right. So finally I went to Bill Twelly, the uh, media relations guy for the Oilers, and said, well, I'm trying to get one of your guys on for our uh, pregame show to get an interview, but nobody seems to want to cooperate. He said, oh, we're not talking to you. And I said, oh, what seems to be the problem? He said, well, we heard that in the game in Calgary the other night, you called Wayne a whiner all night. I said, I beg your pardon? And he said, yeah, we, we have that on good authority that you called Wayne a whiner night, all night, so we're all upset at you, we're not talking to you. I said, well, if you would like, I'll get the tape recording of that game. We had tape recordings, yeah. in, not digital stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> and I think it was real to real. And uh, I said, I'll get, a, get you a copy of that uh, tape of the game, and you can listen to it. And that will prove that I didn't call Wayne Weiner once, let alone all night. Yeah. And uh, so we go on and on, and I, I said, I'll get this tape to you tomorrow. And um, in the meantime, we need to get a player to interview. So anyway, he goes in, and Charlie Huddy comes out, the defenseman. And so I interviewed Charlie, and then that was over. I went back to Bill. I said, well, now I want to talk to Wayne because I want to get this straightened out. 
And so, well, Wayne, you know, it's a big game day. We don't want to bother Wayne. I said, I still want to talk to Wayne because he's always been cooperative with me and that sort of thing. So when he got Wayne, he came out and I said, Wayne, I understand there's an issue that you have with me that you're, you were told I called you a whiner all through the game the other night in Calgary. I said, that's not true. I'm going to send a tape to uh, Bill, and he's going to listen to it, and he can prove that that was not the case. And then, you know, Wayne looked at me, and he said, you know, there were nights when uh, we didn't have a game here at Edmonton. I was driving around. I'd be listening to a Flame game on the radio, and I always found you a very fair broadcaster. So I was a little surprised when I heard that news. Yeah, yeah. So that got patched up pretty quick, but for, uh, you know, half an hour or so there, it was pretty... Pretty uh, testy. Huh. Was there ever a, a Flames wife that just kind of said, wow, stands out? <laughs> I've got to ask the hard questions, Pete. None of this bullshit. I just deal with the players. <laughs> you never, deal never, with once, the players. never once play by play guy just said, holy, who's that? Come on. Oh, no, a very professional air broadcast. We keep focus, wow. focus, focus on the game, the, what's happening you down and on the 200 by 85. You and Pollock lived a different life. <laughs> you and Pollock we lived don't, a different life. We don't want to be distracted by anything else. It's, it's the game. I see. Okay. Uh, biggest character you've ever seen on the Flames? Oh, biggest character. Well, there's been a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> been, yeah. Uh, well, you, you know, we talked earlier here tonight in, uh, about Neil Sheehy, who yeah, was a yeah. tremendous, uh, <laughs> tremendously interesting character from uh, back in the, in the 80s uh, with the, with the uh, Flames. And uh, you go back to that run in, in 04, uh, you know, there were uh, Cristobal Oliwa. He was probably oh, right, the yeah. most weirdest guy that I've ever been around from a hockey player. Really? Even more than Sasha? Yes, more than Sasha. Yes, yes. Well, Sasha had some peculiarities about him, uh, but uh, Crystal Oliwa was really out there, way out there. Yeah. Now he didn't run up and down the stands in his shorts in the Saddle Dome after Are flame games or drive that? the or drive the exercise bike with no clothes on, <laughs> as as Sasha did. But he was nonetheless a character. Oh Jesus! Uh, best fight you've ever called, Pete? The best fight was Jamie McCowan and Ron DeLorme. Oh yeah, you guys talked uh, yeah, about that uh, a few yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, a fight ago. in a game in Vancouver going back into the 80s again. Yep. I mean, I've seen lots of fights, and, and but that one, and you wouldn't have expected it from Jamie McCowan because he wasn't a guy that fought very often. Yeah. But in this particular night, he and Ron DeLorme just went out. They threw punches back and forth, back and forth. I'd love to see that fight again just to see how many punches were actually thrown. And uh, it was, and you know, both of them got really good shots in, yeah. And uh, took lots of punishment and gave lots. Right. And that one really stands out more than any others. I mean, there's all kinds of ones with Tim Hunter and uh, yeah. and uh, Semenko and McSorley yeah. and uh, the Edmonton guys and the Calgary guys. And but that one is the one that really stands out for me. Eighty nine, the Flames win the Stanley Cup. How did you celebrate? What was the biggest memory, or do you, can you remember? I can remember. I, I didn't celebrate. I couldn't. Whoa, really? <laughs> well, what had happened was, is uh, game six was in Montreal on a right. Thursday. So that day, uh, the, um, the uh, CTV phoned me and he said, we'd like to have you on Canada AM oh, tomorrow okay. morning. And so the Flames were playing the game and they're going to fly back to Calgary. And so they wanted me to be at the Saddle Dome at six o'clock in the morning and whether the Flames won or they lost. So, of course, yeah. Flames won the game. And I did all the dressing room things, the yeah. interviews and all that type of thing and had a couple of beer on the pl uh, bus ride out to the airport and then a couple of beer on the plane and went around with the guys a little bit. And then I just got away from them yeah. because I, if I drank a lot, I wouldn't be able to be coherent when I was uh, going across Canada with that interview in the morning. So I went back in the plane and so uh, I, uh, when we landed, the first thing I did was go to the Saddle Dome. Wow. And waited for the camera crew to show up there, and then we uh, did that. And then later I joined the boys at Honey's. Honey's, <laughs> but I was so far behind them when it came to drinking <laughs> that I could have driven them all home. Yeah, yeah. See, that is, but, when I did the Stampeder game in 92 when we won the, the, the Grey Cup, mm -hmm. well, of course, everyone's absolutely bombed except one guy. Greg Peterson, who was a Mormon. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he wasn't a moron. He was a Mormon. Mormon. Yeah. <laughs> and so we, we did our interviews and we went live to Congress. Loved having you on, Peter. A pleasure, Mike. Peter Marr. Yes, sir. Yes, awesome.